Hi, this is Mike, and welcome to Game Dev Weekly News Week 2 for the week ending November the 29th. This is a quick recap of all of the newsworthy things that happened in the world of game development. There wasn't a ton that happened this week, but there were a few interesting announcements, so let's start it off right away. Now, once again, uh, I'll have a link to every single news post that we've got here down in the comments below, uh, links back to the text version from Game From Scratch. Um, so today, this week in Game Dev News, starting off in reverse chronological order, uh, Android Studio 2 beta was pre- uh, sorry, Android Studio 2 preview was released. Uh, of note for game developers, biggest new feature was OpenGL ES profiling support. Uh, so that's definitely handy for uh, real-time games, obviously. Uh, they also added, um, what do they call it, instant run, which is basically hot swap code. It's one of those technologies that uh, quickly enables you to see um, revisions of your code in action, but it's also very problematic. So let's see how well their implementation works. But those are definitely two welcome features for um, game developers specifically, especially that OpenGL ES profiler. Uh, so it's available for download now uh, from Android's site. Next up, a bit of an odd release. Uh, is Infocom, the maker of text adventures from my youth. Basically, they made uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Leather Goddess of the Hobos, um, Zork, uh, a whole bunch of original text adventures. They were like the kings of it in the early 80s. Um, there was a gigantic dump of design documents. We're talking gigantic in the terms of 4,000 plus design documents. Uh, were released on um, archive.org, as you can see in front of you. So if you're interested in seeing the world of game development, even if it's 20, 25 years out of date, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. Uh, so that was dumped out to archive.org. That's Infocom's design documents from many, many years. And my God, did they hoard documents. Uh, so it's an interesting read, even if you're just bored, if you get nothing out of it from a game dev perspective, it can still just be interesting seeing in the minds and the eyes of somebody else. Um, next up, we have a pair of art-related uh, announcements. First off, uh, the venerable GIMP, um, General Image Manipulation Program, I believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, it turned 20 this week. Uh, and as part of that, they also released version 2.8.16. Not a ton in that release, actually, uh, but it's definitely nice to see GIMP continue its development. Happy birthday, 20th, 20th year. It's amazing that it's been around that long. Uh, so again, they did have a new release, um, and they talked a little bit about what's coming in the future. The biggest things on the new release were uh, support for layer groups and raster, open raster files, uh, fixes for layer groups and PSD files, uh, various user interface uh, improvements, OS X build time fixes, translations. So nothing really, really exciting, but uh, happy birthday, GIMP. Uh, another animation software, sorry, another uh, drawing software package out there um, was Krita. Uh, they just announced release 2.9, and the biggest thing here is they're going towards adding animation support. I didn't really get a chance to check it out, but as they're moving towards 3, they're, um, again, adding a timeline and the ability to do animations in Krita. So the new, new release there, uh, exciting to see that happening. Now, on kind of related news, um, there is a, a Kickstarter campaign by a well-known Krita artist uh, for doing... Um, tutorials making game dev art in Krita. So if you go to Krita's page or Game From Scratch, I've got a link to his Kickstarter campaign. So if you're interested in a course on 2D game art creation, maybe consider checking that uh, Kickstarter program out. Uh, next up, some RoboVM, uh, which makes the uh, Java virtual machine for running uh, Java code on iOS, and IntelliJ, uh, the makers of some of the best IDEs and refactoring tools available. Uh, they've come together and have announced an, uh, a contest for uh, releasing the best Kotlin um, source example on GitHub. Basically, you can win an iMac, sorry, a Mac Mini, um, an uh, Severe 2, which I actually never have actually looked up what that thing is, uh, and a couple of other prizes if you create and release a Kotlin um, application that they judge as the best. Now, kind of coincidentally, on Game From Scratch myself, I just started looking at doing some Kotlin tutorials. I just published one on um, porting your LibGDX source code over to Kotlin. Now, if you've never heard of Kotlin, um, it's in, it's a NetBrains that make it, the makers of IntelliJ. I may have mixed the name up in a second ago, but um, the sponsor of this contest, or half the sponsor of this contest, they also make a programming language called Kotlin which runs on the Java virtual machine. And one of the biggest complaints about Java is that it's, it's so verbose. It's, it's so many words to, you've got to type to do the simplest things. And then they've got the most disgusting naming conventions and exception handling you will find anywhere. Um, Kotlin gets rid of and streamlines a whole lot of that. And they also bring up a lot of the more um, 
more common things of the day. Uh, the, your variable declaration follows the more modern stance. Uh, there's better support for lambdas, anonymous functions, functional programming, etc. It's a language I'm looking at a bit more in Game from Scratch. So expect some more Kotlin um, content coming from me soon. It's a very cool language that I'm currently learning myself. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, RoboVM and NetBrains are sponsoring this contest. And kind of as a coincidental timing, um, I announced this last week, but LibGDX and RoboVM are also running um, a contest right now, well, a game jam. And if you think about doing your game in, say, Kotlin, you might be able to do a twofer there. Uh, so something to definitely consider. Now next up, Construct. Uh, Construct is a codeless HTML-based game engine editor all in one. And they just released a new version, uh, version R218. Not a ton in it. Uh, biggest thing was um, support for the new IS, ISO, uh, sorry, iOS uh, 3D touch support. Uh, but they also added um, Canvas video rendering, so you can actually capture uh, Canvas to video, uh, but it only works on the newest version of Firefox, so obviously it's not something that you can use in the wild. Uh, now, same time from Construct2, they also announced the release of a free book, uh, ebook called uh, Level Zero, um, which uh, if you go to um, the Construct2 site, you can download for free. Otherwise, it's on Amazon for something like three bucks. Uh, so, new book. If you're going down the Construct 2 line or you're interested in checking out what Construct 2 is, uh, go ahead and download that. Again, I have a link to this um, in the comments below. Uh, Goo Create, who I covered last week, they just open sourced the um, API, the underlying SDK for Goo. Um, it's a WebGL based game engine. Uh, on top of that, they have Goo Create, which is uh, an editor um, for creating and placing your world. Basically, think like the Unity editor, just the WebGL equivalents. Uh, they did a new release, added uh, uniform scaling and uh, bug fixes, etc. Uh, they also launched their own new developer forums. Um, so if you're interested, here's this new forum design. Uh, better support, obviously, so good step for them. So if you're uh, into Goo or Goo Create, uh, better support options now and a mild uh, bump in the editor version. Uh, next up is Quixel Suite 2 finally shipped out of beta. Now Quixel is a uh, physically based renderer uh, that plugs into Photoshop. Uh, so essentially you can use physical brushes and real world physical properties to model things like metallic, scratches, rusting, etc. And as you can sort of see in the background while I'm talking, and Quixel Suite is special in that it integrates directly into Photoshop. Now if you think this sounds familiar to Substance Painter, they are very, very, very similar products with coincidentally very, very similar pricing. Uh, the biggest difference is uh, Substance Painter is standalone and also has Substance Designer, while Quixel is an entirely Photoshop-based plugin. So if you don't use Photoshop in your tool chain, Quixel is useless to you. But if you are already living in Photoshop, uh, it'll probably appeal to you greatly. So they basically, they just launched version two. Um, you can also buy it currently at 25% off. I believe that is linked to Black Friday, however. And that brings us to our final point. Uh, U.S. Thanksgiving just happened, so that means Black Friday, and the entire world benefits from this. Uh, there was a number of sales, and if you're listening to this right now, there are still a number ongoing because of um, Cyber Monday, which is the somewhat, I would say, failed attempt to make Good Friday for online shops because every single online store just does a Good Friday sale anyways, and hell, half of them were doing a Good Friday week or a Happy Holiday sale that they started like a week ago. So, so Friday is kind of a, an iffy thing, and Monday is definitely an iffy thing, but what that means is a lot of these sales are still ongoing, and one of the big things I did here on Game From Scratch is I tracked them. So basically, I hunted down all of the uh, sales I could find that were directly relevant to um, game developers, and I linked them off of Game From Scratch. So if you are listening right now, as in today is the 29th, or tomorrow at the 30th, if it's one of those two days, a lot of these sales could still be live. So I will link this link as well, very top of the comments. So if you wanna go in, last minute chance to check out some of these great sales, uh, they might be ongoing. Now, one of the ones that's definitely proving very, very popular, let me check, see if it's still up, is Manga Studio EX4. Yeah, it's still here. Now, this is a slightly outdated version of this paint program, but it is on sale for 96% off. So it's one version out of date, but 96% savings is pretty profound. So this is definitely the one that people are most interested in. 
Uh, but there are a number of sales that are kind of like this. Uh, and a lot of sales are actually on Steam as well. So if you've got Steam installed, be sure to go check it out. There's some really good, uh, impressive sales going on right there. Uh, so I will link that at the top, but obviously that is going to end very, very, very soon. Uh, so if you are interested in cashing in on a couple of these sales, uh, move quickly. So uh, that was the week in review. Um, not a ton happened this week, but there was enough to make it worthwhile. I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, recap and hopefully you caught this in time to, to catch a couple of those sales. Uh, God knows my wallet hurts a little bit right now, but definitely a good time to buy stuff. Uh, so uh, happy belated Good Friday. Uh, oh, sorry, Black Friday. Uh, that was the week in game development. See you all later.